What's up guys, it's your boy Fader here and today I'm going to be teaching you guys some ways to reduce impa lag. Um, if you guys want another video like this, uh, just please let me know. Um, I really want to look forward to helping you guys um, reduce impa lag. So um, I'm just going to hop right into it um, and I'm going to have these links in the description for you guys. Um, I know you guys are familiar, if you guys are not familiar with timer resolution, what it does is it um, turns the input lag, cuts it in half. This is my minimum, uh, what do you call it, input lag, it's like 15, but when you cut it in half, it's uh, zero, you know, it cuts it in half, basically. So, um, if you guys don't know how that works, um, basically what you do is you minimize it and it runs in the background. As you can tell, I already have one open, but yeah, once it runs, it um, makes your game less delayed, more smoother. Not more smoother, but yeah, it makes the game less delayed. I don't know if it makes it smoother. But yeah, that is one <coughs> thing you can use to reduce input lag. Um, I know you guys are tired of saying this, but um, yes, that is a way. Um, another way that you can uh, reduce input lag is by using this beautiful app right here. I don't even know what it's called. But uh, what I do know is um, I use it for my controller and I've overclocked my controller to a thousand hertz. It's originally set to 31 hertz and it's really putting controllers at a disadvantage or any device in here at all. Cause like my mouse, I really don't use mouse and keyboard, but I have it on default. But if I overclocked it, it would be like way more responsive and faster, but I don't really play on keyboard and mouse, so I don't care about that but yeah um if you guys don't know how to do this basically what you do is you click on your controller and i think for ps4 you can't tell if it's your controller or not so what you do is you just unplug it and plug it back in to figure out which one is your device because i think it says usb compatible device for ps4 controls but i have an xbox one controller so it tells me that so um what you do here is you click on this right here and you put it on a thousand and then you press filter on device and you press install, right? Then it installs and then after you do that, you unplug your controller and plug it back in and it should say one and then it should say a thousand and it should say yes. Now, there's another problem with this because um, a problem is if you try to overclock, it'll say um, the install service hasn't actually been installed. Are you sure you want to overclock? Do not overclock that because if you do that, your um, controller or your mouse won't be responsive to the game at all after you apply it. Um, I know a lot of people are like hesitant on overclocking, um, but I do overclock and um, I don't recommend this overclock, but this is the overclock I use because it works for me and my game doesn't crash. It's like if you go overboard, your game or your PC will crash and it'll just restart. As long as you don't have this on startup, like don't ever cut this on. Like make sure when you log on your PC, you apply this every day instead of um, having this on automatic. Because if you overclock it and your get or your PC um, starts up, then um it's just going to keep resetting then you're going to have to reset your pc or uh reset your windows or whatever you call it because it's stuck at this overclock and you don't want it to do that so make sure this is disabled and i usually have my overclock saved to this one right here this this works for me i don't know if it works for y'all i have 16 gigabytes of ram ryzen 5 3 600 i have a 2060. i know it works for me because it works for me um another thing that um i can show you guys is something that I use inside of the computer itself. So I have my keyboard property settings and you know, at first I was like, this is useless because it does nothing for my controller. No, this affects controller as well. So if you put repeat delay on short, um, it'll, I think it'll make your game more responsive and you put the repeat rate um, right here on slow, it just makes the game more responsive. I've tested this out and it works. And it's the same thing with mouse settings um if you go here and then you go to additional mouse settings it's the same thing right here i put this on fast for double click speed <clears throat> and then i just put this on fast just in case i don't know if that does anything but i put that stuff on fast like all this stuff affects controller as well so this is what i have my settings set to for um my keyboard and mouse and these actually work like a charm. It made my game way more responsive. Like at first I had this on fast because I thought it would make it fast, but you're actually supposed to have it repeat like on slow, which is actually weird because I thought it would, you know, make it more delayed, but it's actually faster that way. This one on short and then this one on slow. So yeah, that reduces input lag too. Um, 
Another way that you can uh, make your game more responsive is by overclocking your monitor. Um, I, I don't do it anymore, but um, yeah, I don't do it anymore because sometimes it'll just glitch out, like when I get a friend request or something like that. But um, if you want to overclock your monitor, what you can do is you can go to customize, create type of resolution, and then you can make sure it's like at 1080p or whatever your resolution is on. And then you can like set, see how high you can go um, with your resolution until like it just tells you you can't do it. Cause like if you go to like if I was to go to 240 hertz, my screen would just stay black and it tell you you know you can't do this. Or my TV would tell me like um, oh you can't um, go that far with the overclock. Like the highest my overclock can go is 167. And like it might say like it might say you can go higher than that, but you'll be able to tell because um, like the way your uh, cursor looks, it's not like keeping track of all the like movement on your keyboard and not, well, not keyboard, but on your uh, mouse. So if you, like like I said, mine can only go up to 167, but if I go above it, my cursor looks really laggy. So that's how I know it's not actually working. Even though like your screen might cut back on and say, yo, it's working, it, it's really not working because the cursor is, you know, laggy. But like if you overclock and the cursor is perfectly fine, then yeah, you're good to go. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, Cause sometimes when you go on Fortnite, it's like really hard to um, keep it on 165. Cause when you get a friend request, your screen goes black and then it sends you back to 165 and then you have to cut off your monitor and cut it back on. But if you want that extra, you know, two, three Hertz, it really does make a difference in uh, input lag and response time and all that stuff and smoothness too. Like I was surprised when it worked like a charm too, honestly. Um, another thing, um, make sure this is always on full screen. Now, if you wanna keep your overclock on 165 hertz, what you could do is you could put it on aspect ratio and it's like a window version of full screen. Uh, but I don't recommend it because I think the game is more delayed like I used to play on it So I can overclock my monitor and it stays on that no matter what happens But I think it made my game more delayed. And that's why I don't play on aspect aspect ratio anymore I can still play on full screen because I get the most out of my PC when I do it that way Now I know a lot of people like yo fade there. Why don't you uh? do the g-force thing well i've tried the g-force thing and you know it worked for a good minute but uh yeah i don't like it um it feels really delayed i play on the 165 hertz of course and um i don't play with low latency mode on because it actually makes the game even more delayed like the only time you would use um ultra low latency or whatever or low latency on is like when your gpu is like at 99 so it'll um, reduce, like, it'll take some stress off the GPU so that you can um, actually take advantage of lower latency response time and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's why I cut it off. And my game has felt way more responsive and, like, smoother and all that stuff. Because for some strange reason, having low latency mode on Ultra makes the game even laggier, which makes no sense. But um, uh, I guess, you know, a lot of people who recommend it, I've really don't recommend it honestly i don't know if it works differently for people with better specs than me or anything like that but all i know is my game works very more if that makes any sense more responsive with it off so that's why i keep it like that um power management maximum performance make sure you get this set to the gpu you have put this on high performance i really haven't did anything else but those because i really don't care I don't know if this is supposed to be on this, but honestly, it's not a huge deal or difference to me. Yeah, another thing that you guys can do is um, check for updates. And you know, it might not tell you that, uh, you know, this, there's an update available, but just check because you never know if you have an update like right there, I got a security update or some bull crap like that. Honestly, it doesn't matter, but you need to check for those updates because those updates improve and get you ready for um, FPS and all that stuff like some of it helps with games and also GeForce experience GeForce experience works really good and um, This is what I used to record but you need to make sure your drivers are up to date Like I know there's a new one that just released like a couple of days ago So I don't even know if that was yesterday. No, yeah, it was a couple of days ago. That's all that matters and um, 
Yeah, I updated this and my FPS has been stuck at 240 for a good minute. Like I haven't had any FPS drops or anything like that. So yeah, whatever this update did, it really improved my FPS. And I just thought I should let you guys know because they just dropped the update. So yeah. Um, if you guys want some more information on how to reduce input lag, uh, please let me know. I still got some other techniques. I can't put it all in one video, but I just wanted to let you guys know how this works. And yes, yeah, your boy, Fader, signing out. Peace.